Hi, my friends. So we are back again to talk about uh, some shadow work. And again, our theme is about uh, what I'm calling the universal shadow. Although today it's a little more specific to our individual lives or the lives of those around us rather than the sort of universal world. But it's it's still part of focusing our shadow work on how we can contribute to bettering the lives of others in theory rather than focusing only on ourselves. And as I've said throughout, I think it's important, of course, to focus on ourselves and, and only in caring for ourselves are we able to care for others. But there's still ways in which we can use the tarot or other forms of divination to take care of others and to, to reduce what I call the universal shadow. So today we're talking about toxicity. It's something that comes up in a lot of self-care circles. And one of the things that's very trendy right now, of course, is to talk about how we can excise toxic people from our lives. And we should do that. But what we're going to talk about today is not the impact of others on us, but our impact on others. And so we're going to look at, in this spread today, ways in which our own behavior might cause toxic reactions in other folks. We all have the ability to care for others and be charming and wonderful and thoughtful. And we all have bad habits and qualities that uh, could impact other people in a negative way. So that's what we're going to look at. So the spread today asks us to consider the ways in which our own behaviors might have toxic impacts on those in, those in our lives. And it's pretty straightforward as a spread, but I think like the unconscious bias spread, this is going to be a little bit harder because it requires us to really look in the mirror, uh, really not necessarily accept the first thing that comes to mind, and explore our bad habits in a way that we may not necessarily do. I want to caution everyone from getting into victim blaming and, and getting into sort of negative space here. This isn't about, uh, you know, why we're awful. This is about things we do that may impact others in a negative way that we're not conscious of and that we can become conscious of and how we can, again, reduce that universal shadow on a more localized level than maybe we've talked about in the last couple of videos, all right? So, as usual, I'm going to take you through the spread. It's not personal, uh, you know, um, but uh, it is uh, it is a good example. Uh, I used a pip deck in this one just because I haven't done that yet, and that's something I, I haven't been doing for a while, so I figured I would break, break out the pip decks. And it is March. We used to do March with the pips. So I'm going to flip things around, talk you through the spread, and show you an example of how to work with it. Uh, like most things, I'm curious to hear your experience is if you go through this and, and, um, and explore what you've learned. This is a little bit easier in essence because it's not so much about bias or, uh, defensiveness. It's, it's about us and just having bad habits. Although I can say that like a lot of these things, starting with the defensiveness reading can probably go a long way. All right, so let's flip things around and we will take a look at the toxicity spread. Be right back. All right, so here's how this spread works. And it's very much like the others. You'll notice a lot of themes. The first position is show me one behavior that I demonstrate that has a toxic effect on others. This is going to be the most difficult because there's really no way in tarot that I can think of to figure out who specifically the behavior may be impacting. What you have to do is figure out what the behavior is. And then when you do, you'll probably have a good sense of how or who it's impacting. But um, this first position really does require spending a lot of time. And like the other ones, I, I do recommend not necessarily going with the immediate response. Or if you do, just really digging into it to validate that you're not letting yourself off the hook. The second one is how that toxicity manifests in their lives. So in, in essence, what's the negative impact I'm having on them? The third position is one misconception I have about this behavior that keeps me from changing it. So in essence, what do I think this habit or behavior does or how it benefits me that really isn't true? Four is show me one step I can take to revise that behavior. So how can I start to make myself better? And then the one that we've closed most of these with, not all but most, um, how can I check my progress? 
All right. So as I said, this is not a real example for me. I wanted to do a sample. I think there are certainly some elements of me that show up in this reading. Um, as I've said all along, I really do recommend shuffling the cards uh, between each layout for the spread because when cards repeat, it's usually pretty interesting. And I have to say, in this particular reading, I had like an amazing repeat that I just love and I love when things like that happen. All right. So again, the first one is show me one toxic behavior that I demonstrate that has a negative impact on others. And so in this first reading um, or this first position, we have the uh, ten of uh, I'm sorry, the nine of cups, the page of swords and the three of pentacles or the three of coins. And this, you know, even as a sample reading, this was not easy to sit with because none of these are necessarily bad cards. What I had to recognize is the numerology at work here, because, again, with pip decks, you really have to sort of do the math of the reading. Nines are um, a, a push, an effort, a labor, and it's a subtle difference between the eight. Like, eight is a job, a task, a thing that needs to be done. Nine is like the doing of it, the the laborious nature of pushing the rock up the hill. And so in essence, what we have with the nine of cups is a huge emotional labor. Um, it has a negative connotation to it, as a lot of these cards will, because of course we're talking about shadow. So emotional labor, um, exhaustion. And then the three of pentacles is all about growth, usually financial or life growth, or like um, like job growth, career, the daily stuff, family growth, you know, having a baby, for example. And then the Knight of Swords is just a smart kid, um, a smart student, a curious student. Now, my job as a reader, and this is not always easy to do when we're reading for ourselves, is to make this make sense in the context of the the question and the question is again show me one behavior that i demonstrate that has a toxic impact on others and so what i came up with here is that there's um you, you i'm sorry i'm referencing my notes as a person you have a somewhat immature tendency to cut out the emotional labor and instead kind of keep your focus on the idea that only practical growth matters. So to put that in a more understandable sentence, it's like you you just don't do the emotional labor in relationships with people because you feel like it's only, you know, the, that part doesn't matter. What matters is like the daily stuff. It's just growing your life and getting by and doing the dishes and, you know, making sure that your daily life is on track. But because of that, you are ignoring the emotional labor that others require of you. And that actually stems from a little bit of intellectual immaturity. In fact, you use your intellectual immaturity, your intellectualism to stop you from doing the emotional labor. If you look at the way that the page is about to sort of like s s cut off the relationship between the Nine of Cups and him and the Three of Pentacles, it's like he would rather do the banal stuff than deal with the messy emotional stuff. And so here we have a person who's really not comfortable dealing with emotions, and there's a lot of emotional labor that others expect of him, and I'm using him just because the page is pictured as a male on this card. Um... And he's like, no, you know, you got to make money. You got to pay the bills. You got to do the dishes. You got to focus on the daily stuff. Life gets away from you fast and you got to rein things in. So that's the toxic behavior. And and what really matters, I think, is the Three of Pentacles sort of less than the other two. The Three of Pentacles tells us why, that this person is really only focused on daily life and keeping daily life humming along. But the real toxic behavior is the focus on cutting out any emotional labor because it's exhausting and it's messy. And they think that this is a practical action, but it's really just laziness and immaturity. So the next thing we're going to ask is, uh, how does this toxic... <laughs> how does this toxicity that's a hard word to say by the way how does this toxicity manifest in this other person's life and here we have the ten of wands we've got the four of pentacles and we've got the queen of cups and uh this is an example of how 
I sometimes will look for who in the spread is doing the acting. Even though the Queen of Cups is the last card, she's the dominant present presence, and she's looking at the other two. And so what I have, and again, remember the question is, how is this impacting that another person in, in our lives? So the Queen of Cups is someone who is a, she's the nurturer of nurturers. She wants to take care of people. She wants to help them. She wants to soothe their wounds and take care of them. She is a lover. All of the Court of Cups is, are lovers, and they're romantic. And so we have someone who is a natural-born romantic, who wants to and needs to take care of other people and be them, be there for them emotionally, trapped in this jail of practicality, this conservative, stuck Four of Pentacles that's just banal and daily. And it's keeping her boxed in, if we look at the way these four pentacles are boxed in, from the full measure of her passion, which is the Ten of Wands. So she's really, she, she because she wants to care for this page of uh, swords, she's boxing in herself, forcing herself to live in this banal environment that's really cutting her off how, how much she just wants to explode in the world with all this fire and water, with all this passion. You know, she's she's reined in and feeling cut off, but she stays there out of love. So the next spread piece of the spread is show me one misconception I have about this behavior that keeps me from changing it. And so here we have the king of uh, wands, the tower and the chariot. And in essence, we have a misconception of power here. We have the King of Wands, who now becomes the, quote, me in this reading, the person I'm reading for. That would be the, the Page of Swords in the first position. He becomes the King of Wands here. And his attitude is that real power lies in being able to blow shit up and move on. In other words, the emotional labor that we talked about in the first position, that Nine of Cups... That doesn't matter. He's so focused on the sense of duty he has to be the the leader, to be the king, um, and to do things in the way that feels most responsible and right to him. Um, it doesn't matter if people get caught in the trap or they get caught in the explosion as a result of the way he lives his life you know if that's if that happens that's other people's problems you know and he's just gonna keep moving he's just gonna move on so he has somewhat of a hot-headed attitude about life and he thinks that you just have to be ready for the explosion um, and this may be why he doesn't want to do the emotional labor, because deep down, this sort of kingly, you know, king of wands, I'm the leader, I'm, you know, I'm on fire, this is how I work, this is how I do things, um, he may be afraid that things will blow up if he does the emotional labor, and it's better to let other people deal with that and suffer than for him to deal with that he's always ready to move on this is a interesting thing with the king of wands because in a way it's the least wands the king of wands experience i've ever had like there's a like there's a passionate person in there but he has it so pent up in in fear of having this tower moment that he's almost always ready to move on if things start to get too hot so he's resisting his king of wandsness, he's resisting his true nature um, in order to keep the reins on everything so that he doesn't get hurt. So now we get into the next position, which is show me one step I can take to revise this behavior. And so here we get the uh, high priestess or the, the popes, um, the three of pentacles again, and the sun. And immediately what I thought was withhold the daily in favor of some heat. So this is one of those times where I look at the high priestess as a verb. And the high priestess can be very withholding. And sometimes that's a good thing. Sometimes that's a bad thing. Um, but we have the three of pentacles again from that very first spread where it represented growing our daily life. And so what I think this says, one thing you can do is you can just withhold that and go out into the sun and experience the heat. You know, get in get in the hot 
plate. Get in the the messy stuff you don't want to be in. Like go put these parts of yourself in the spotlight by subjugating for a little while your own practical tendencies and your own resistance to the emotional stuff. Another way I could say this is that your religion or your faith should become should be in something more mysterious than the daily. You know, so if we think about the high priestess as someone who's mysterious and who holds the key to the book and who's secretive and has some deep inner knowledge, then within that within that as a piece of advice is to go deeper, to let go of the the life stuff for a little while, because that's gonna keep growing anyway, threes indicate growth, and get out into the sun, get out into the world, stop protecting yourself. You can't hide in the dark. Go out and do the work. In essence, it's like, just put aside the resistance, put aside the practical for a little while, and get out there in the sun, in the field, in the garden, and do the work. And then the final position is, how can I check my work? And here we have three cards that we've seen before, right here, in a completely different order. And that's one reason why I love the idea of doing these spreads by shuffling in between each one because things like this happen and it's so incredible and it's like how can you check your progress will you blow up everything that you thought you were everything that you thought you needed to hold on to to protect yourself from to um uh subjugate your king of wandsness you blow all that up and you focus instead on the forward motion, on growing, on the chariot. You know what I mean? So just by moving one card in this spread, and this was just, it came out randomly, but it's the same three cards. By just checking in with yourself and saying, am I blowing up the stuff I thought I was protecting myself from? Am I doing the work that I wasn't doing before? Am I letting go of the fear of losing? Do I put the tower stuff behind me and focus on progress in my relationship with this person? Or am I not doing that? Am I still in old habits? And so that's how you check your progress in this case. So that's the spread. That's an example of the spread. Again, just to recap, it's show me one behavior I demonstrate that has toxic effects on others. How does that toxicity manifest in their lives? Show me one misconception I have about this behavior that keeps me from changing it. Show me one step I can take to revise that behavior and show me how to check my progress. So that's what we're talking about today. It's it's um, toxicity from the point of view of others. You know, as I said in the intro, we do a lot of work around getting toxic people out of our lives. And we're probably not toxic individuals, but we all can and do do things that have negative impacts or cause toxicity in other people's lives. And so this is an opportunity for us to sit down and turn the spotlight on ourselves, like that sun card in the previous example, and say, where am I falling down? Where am I impacting others in a negative way? And how can I change that? And I think that, again, this is an act of empathy. So it really should come from a generous place, not a place of self-flagellation, not a place of victim blaming or, you know, setting yourself down the path of, of uh, insecurity. Just looking at ourselves from a different point of view for once and thinking about toxicity is not just something that happens to us, but something that maybe sometimes we do to others. So hope this is interesting. Love to hear your experience. And we'll talk soon.